Good morning to all. I'm Sumitra, Associate Professor in Triple A Department, Arundhati Engineering College, and I'm managing renewable energy system for seven semester Triple A students. Sir, in last uh, lecture, I told you what are the basic classification of energy sources, and based on what the classifications are made, and I listed some of the examples of uh, each and every energy sources in detail. So now in this uh, lecture, I'm going to discuss about the different types of renewable energy sources and which the first unit is going to deal with. Along with the types, uh, I at the same time, I'll be uh, uh, depicting you the pros and cons of each and every renewable energy sources and its application also. So let it start with the types of renewable energy sources. We all know that there exist different types of energy sources like uh, hydro, um, like hydropower, bioenergy, geothermal energy, solar energy, wind energy, hydrogen energy, and ocean energy. So let me start with each and every energy uh, in detail one by one. So now coming to the hydropower. So from the name itself, it indicates that uh, uh, power is going to get generated from the water, which is uh, stored in the reservoir or even in the dams, right? So that uh, kinetic energy of the water is used to run the blades of the turbine. And that turbine in turn, which is giving a mechanical input to the generators associated with that. And the generator in turn converts the mechanical energy to the electrical energy. So the output electrical energy is uh, transmitted to the grids through the distribution station and the substation. It will reach the consumers like the residences or even industries, etc. This is how the flow of the power from the hydropower, uh, from the hydro, it is getting generated. And next one is the biomass energy. So we all know that there exist different sources of biomass energy. So we can even consider the sewage wasters, municipal solid wasters, animal residues, industrial waste, uh, forestry crops residues, agricultural crops. All these things can be considered as the biomass source of energy production. So let me tell how the energy is getting produced over there. So organic material uh, that is made from the plants and animals uh, has an existing capacity of over 7,000 megawatt of energy production. So uh, generally speaking, your biomass as a fuel consists of the organic matter as I said earlier, such as industrial waste, agricultural waste, root bark, etc. Right? These can also be used indirectly. So why means it will produce the methane gas, right? Uh, uh, as it uh, biomass itself it decays or through a modern process called gasification, methane can getting evolved by means of this process. And also this methane produced power by burning the uh, thing in a boiler to create the steam. That steam in turn used to drive the steam turbines or through the internal combustion in gas turbines and reciprocating engines, right? So now coming to the advantages of this biomass energy, it's, it's a clean and renewable energy source and it also reduces the soil and water pollution. And uh, it's a, it, it provides a, a healthy environment uh, rather than when uh, burning something like oil and all, right? It, is, it was also available abundant in quantity. And at the same time, it is having certain disadvantages like it is getting dispersed and land intensive source. So there is an option of uh, polluting your land uh, that is uh, aquatic life of the thing. And it also produces certain value of smoke and it has low energy density. These are the advantages and disadvantages of biomass energy. Next, coming to the geothermal energy. So now, uh, how this geothermal energy works, and this again, this is a picture which shows you uh, the clear working of your geothermal, and it consists of a magma. We all know that magma is nothing but the solid rock which is heated at a higher temperature. That is nothing but the magma, and this reservoir, uh, reservoir, and then the turbine, turbine is getting coupled with the generator, and the output is getting connected to the transformers, and then the main grids, and then it, at the same time, it is accompanied with some uh, condenser and cooling tower, etc. So now, how the process is taking place is first, first the cool water, the cool water is pumped into the heater or that is nothing but the magma, right? And by absorbing that heat, the cool water is converted into the steam, right? So that steam is acting as an input to the turbine, which runs the blades of the turbine, which in turn produces a mechanical energy. That mechanical energy is then fed to the generator, which acts as an input and which in turn converts the mechanical energy to the electrical energy. And with the help of the transformers if, uh, to the distribution um, substations, the power is getting stepped up. And then with the help of step down transformers, the power is getting stepped down to a certain levels of voltages, which in turn fit to the different consumers. Okay. So this is how the geothermal uh, power plant is working. And coming to the pros and cons of your geothermal power plant. 
it is reliable and sustainable in nature obviously it is one form of uh, a uh, pure clean environment reliable and sustainable and it is an eco friendly or environmental friendly one it has a good potential to meet the power requirement at the same time uh, the cost of investment for setting up a geothermal plant is high and also there is a possibility of emission of greenhouse gases during the extraction of the heat from the ground and also the ground water is likely to be polluted from the gaseous effluents and the components of the plants or like we get polluted so these are the advantages and disadvantages of your geothermal energy next one is your solar energy so we all know that uh, sun source is the biggest source which is available in abundant quantity right so that is your solar energy so it is directly derived from the sun in the form of solar radiation so this picture clearly tells you how the solar energy is getting um, trapped by means of the solar panels and how it is converted into the usable electricity right so the sun's radiation is getting trapped by the solar panel and then the solar panel converts that uh, radiation into the dc power and with the help of the inverter it converts the dc to the ac and then that power is directly we can either feed it to the grid or we can store it in the battery or you can uh, use it for supplying to the uh, residential purposes right or whatever household requirements which require some small load power in that case we can use the power which is trapped from the solar panel which is in built in or if we have excess thing we can either uh, deliver it to the grid and we can even uh, get money from the ev market also okay Uh, then coming to the advantages and disadvantages, it is almost limited. It is also one of the uh, unlimited source of energy, and since it is available free in nature, and it also doesn't produce any air pollution. And uh, but the drawback it is, it is only available during the daytime and also in clear days. And uh, it requires a larger area to entrap the appreciable solar energy for the generation of economical amount of electricity. So the next one is the wind energy. so coming to the wind energy and it is uh, we all know that the wind is getting induced in the atmosphere due to the uneven heating of the earth surface by the sun so here also the sun is acting as an indirect source of energy right uh, we can't say the sun uh, that is the solar energy is the one which depends upon the sun's radiation most of the renewable energy sources are getting produced uh, because of the sun's impact only so well known example is the wind uh, which is getting induced in the atmosphere by uneven heating of the earth surface by the uh, sun and this wind energy uh, which is used to run the windmill which in turn will drive the generator to produce the electrical power right or even it is used to run the water pump directly right uh, so uh, basically uh, roughly we can say the energy available from the wind is about 1.5 to 10% also, okay then coming to the advantages and disadvantages it is also one of the renewable form and it is also freely and abundantly available in nature and it is relatively inexpensive to generate and it doesn't result in any pollution air pollution and the wind mills require minimal uh, maintenance and at the same time the operating cost is also less okay then coming to the disadvantages one is suitable it is uh, it's not possible for us to construct this wind power plant anywhere in any location it requires some sort of areas where the windy uh, and that is it requires some windy areas to construct such things right and it also produces less and less energy comparing to the solar and other things and uh, this wind mill is bulky and even the turbine blades are producing some noisy or atmosphere which will cause some impact to the surrounding people okay so these are all the advantages and, and, and disadvantages of the um, disadvantages of uh, solar energy next coming to the ocean energy so uh, ocean energy so ocean energy means strictly speaking it is a uh, it is also depends upon sun's radiation indirectly uh, because the tidal energy is a form of hydropower that converts the energy obtained from the tides into the useful forms of power and also uh, uh, the gravitational pull of the moon and the sun results in the formation of the tides right so that's why i told you this ocean energy is indirectly depending on your sun's radiation okay this is how the ocean energy is getting produced ocean tidal energy and then ocean wave energy uh, wave energy is produced up or wave energy we can say that it is an energy it's an energy harnessed from the oceanic waves so once if the wind blows across the surface of the ocean it creates a waves and thus they can also be referred to as the energy moving across the surface of the water right so uh, with the help of the waves and the tides along with the impact of the sun's 
radiation uh, ocean energy is resulting in the production of your uh, generating a uh, production of electricity right coming to the pros and cons uh, it is free from pollution and the tidal basin can also be used for the fish farming right the tidal basin which is used to have the ocean the uh, same thing can also be used for the fish farming it is best suited to meet the peak power demands and it is superior to hydrogen energy also right uh, and then coming to the drawbacks uh, the tidal power plant is costly when compared to the thermal and hydrogen and run, uh, it has poor efficiency and at the same time it has high installation cost um, 